Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at installing and configuring the PAT menu script that I've written. Stick around and we'll get right to it. I have done my best to make the install of this script as simple as could possibly be. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal window just so we're ready there. And let's jump over to my GitHub site. And guys, I'll leave a link to the GitHub site down in the description below. Uh, but once you get over to the GitHub, we're going to just scroll down past all the files. Uh, and here's some brief information on it. And then this is what we're looking for install. We're going to simply copy this one line here and we'll go ahead and head back over to the Pi. In our terminal window, let's paste in that command and go ahead and hit return. Now the first time uh, you run this installation script, it is going to grab two or three dependencies that it has. So one of them is called events, which is a PDF file viewer. Uh, one of them is called YAD, and it's one of the ways we display some information inside the script. And the last one is called JQ, uh, which helps us to manipulate the PAT configure file. The other thing it will do is it will go ahead and download all of the necessary uh, scripts, I'm sorry, all the necessary documents that we need uh, to be able to search through. So that's uh, all of the RDOP stations downloaded into the different lists. All right, but that's it. That's as quick and simple as it can possibly be. So at this point, we can close out of the terminal window. Now, let's don't get into a rush here and open up Pat Menu. What we want to do is let's just open up our, uh, our browser here, our, our file browser, and we're going to come down to Pat Menu. Inside of Pat Menu, you'll locate a file called config. So I'm going to just double click on that to open that up. And then let's go through this line by line so uh, you guys can get yours configured the way you need it. So the first line here is uh, the command for your pi r.c modem. Notice that this is in quotation marks. Make sure you don't delete those quotation marks. They're needed uh, in this particular case. So in my case, I've got my RDOP modem uh, in my home directory and then in a subdirectory called RDOP. And if you followed along uh, with my setup uh, web page that I created for you guys, then yours will probably be in the same location. Uh, one other thing here is when you call the script uh, pi rdop c8515, Remember, this is the sound card numbers for starting the Pi R.C modem. So if your, uh, if your sound card number is different, then you'll have to change that here. The next item that you see is the location of Pi R.C GUI. Again, if you followed my tutorial on setting up your Pi, it should be in the RDOP folder. Uh, a real quick easy way to look at that is right here I'm going back to the file browser and you'll notice this is my home name here and then right here is RDOP and you can see there's my pi RDOP C and my pi RDOP GUI file. So that's the location of both of those. The next command down uh, is how you start direwolf. Now this will be dependent on uh, maybe if you're running stretch or if you're running buster. Uh, a lot of times with buster we are <clears throat> with buster we get the flashing text if we just start it with direwolf dash p. Um, if you want to eliminate that you could say dash t space zero and that would be your direwolf command. But however you start direwolf, uh, whatever command you use, that's what you want to plug in right here. The next down is the way you run kissattach. Um, so this, this line here 
is the way you would normally run KissAttach. Notice that the port name is left off of the end. We will plug the port name in here. Now, your port name may be different. To find out what that is, if you've, again, if you followed my uh, setup, then a lot of this is just going to work for you. But if you didn't and you need to know that, let's go over to the terminal and let's run cat forward slash etc forward slash AX, oh, I'm sorry, ETC forward slash AX25 forward slash AX ports. And you can look right here. This is the line that we entered when we set up our Pi, and this is the port name that it's referring to. So if you named yours something different, you'll need to change the config file to match right here. Okay, the next line down is used for the find RDOP map. Uh, so when you're, when you're using the find RDOP script, uh, you just need to choose whether you want to use the USA, which is the default, or the world. If you wanted to use the world map, you would just need to put a pound sign right there, and then come down here and delete that one, and that would go ahead and open up the world map. Now, I like to just use the USA, so I'm gonna change it back to the way we had it. Okay, next line down is, do you use rig control? This is a simple yes or no here. Now, AutoPAT will not work without rig control because AutoPAT has to be able to change the frequencies on the radio in order to move down through the list. So just keep that in mind. If you're not using rig control, AutoPAT's not going to work for you. If you are, we'll choose yes here. The next section down right here, this particular line, let's take a look at it. Notice again that we do have quotation marks. Make sure you don't delete those on the end. But this is your rig control command. Now, notice that there's no D right here. It's just R-I-G-C-T-L. And then it's the model number for your radio, the location of your uh, cable, and the serial speed of your rig. Now, one thing I haven't tested, I didn't have any beta testers that were using this, is if we're using hardware PTT control. I use a signal link which uses Vox. I know that all of this works with that setup and with other sound cards that use Vox. If you're using something that requires hardware PTT, you're just going to have to experiment with this and please report back and let us know uh, if you have success or if you run into a trouble. Uh, either way, that way we can kind of help the community as a whole by leaving that information in the comments below. Okay, the next line down is what, uh, what mode does your radio use for HF digital comms? The 857 uh, uses USB. Uh, I believe it can also use uh, uh, digital, I believe is the other name for it. Um, but whatever mode you need to use, you'll need to call that here. That's what you would normally plug in for your rig control command. Um, so you'll have to decide here what's needed for your particular radio. Next line down, uh, same thing, but this applies to the packet work. So the 857 can be set to packet or it can be set to FM. Both happen to work uh, with the 857. The next line down is the port number that you use to call PAT uh, when you go to the web browser. You're, uh, typically you'll enter like 127.0.0.1 colon and then a port number. Uh, 8080 is the default and that's what you see here. Uh, again, if you followed my setup directions, you may be using uh, port 5000, which is the port that I prefer to use. So if you are, you'll wanna change that uh, here. The only time that's going to come into play is if you use the uh, if you choose to log in a new operator using the PAT menu, and then the last line here you can more than likely leave default. This is the location of the log file uh, that's created. Like uh, when AutoPAT runs, 
it writes uh, success or failures out to the log file. And you'll just find that in your documents folder and it'll be a file called mylog.txt. So that's, uh, it, it, it takes me a few minutes to explain it, but it really doesn't take that long to get everything configured. It may require a little bit of trial and error, but hopefully things will go fairly smooth for you. Once you get that config file worked out, you're done. You can press uh, Control S to save, or you can come up here and click the save button here. So now we can go ahead and close out of that. I'm going to close some of these other windows. And you'll find the PAT menu icon on your desktop. You'll want to double click that and click Execute in Terminal. If you just, uh, if you just chose Execute, you're never going to see this because it's going to actually run in the background. Uh, once this gets opened up, we can, I'm going to go ahead and just maximize it. So now, if we wanted to start our RDoC connection, we would just enter option two. Press enter. It takes it now. I don't have a rig opened up to, or I don't have a rig connected up to this right now. But it has started RDoC in the background, and it started the RDoC GUI so that we could watch those connections. I'm going to just shrink that down for a second, and I'm going to choose option seven to stop the modems. So if I choose option seven here, you'll notice it closes the GUI and it shuts down the Pi RDOPC modem. So let's try that with number three for starting packet. Now again, you're gonna see rig control errors on mine uh, because I don't have the rig actually connected to this Pi right now. So it takes that just a couple of seconds, but it tells you that Direwolf is uh, ready, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, it tells you that Direwolf and the packet setup is ready to run. So let's take a look at something else. I have this other little script written that uh, just shows me the system status. So basically it's what's going on with my system right now, what's running. Uh, it's just kind of a little uh, experimental script that I've been looking at. But you can see right here after we started that, that both Direwolf and KissAttach are both running. Notice my rig control daemon is not running. That's because of the rig not being connected. Uh, but Pat is running. So this, is, uh, this little script just kind of gives me a quick glance at what's running and what's not. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit uh, stop the modems. And then if we refresh this, you'll see now that Direwolf and KissAttach is not running. So there you have it, guys. That's the way you get it installed and configured. Uh, so take this, play with it. Keep in mind, it is beta software, so we may run into some snags along the way. Put those comments down below if you do run into an issue or if you have a recommendation for how we could make this better. Uh, I am going to try to continue to develop this, uh, add features to it, and see what else we might can do with the PAP menu. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.